We don't believe in Scientology, do we? Do we? In many of my readings, I have seen truths come forward that are true on many levels. And this truth in this reading blows my mind. A very significant read. We're going to learn about Scientology and about how you have a piece of your soul trapped somewhere that must be audited or telepathically connected to in order to become powerful and remember who you are and to get in the clear and to connect to pieces of yourself that have been lost. So welcome. My name is Mary Moses. I am a scryer and the symbologies brought forward for us have told me things that I'm not sure I believe, but please use these seeds of information and ask your higher self and dig deep into the solar plex, plexus of your stomach and decide for yourself. Although this is an individual reading for La Crista, if you're here, you're meant to hear this message. There are two aspects of yourself in the ethereal realm. There are two aspects of yourself under a volcano or a rainbow, or three actually. You have a body thetan or some weird strange parasitic thing attached to you and a male energy. In this cave or volcano, it says Zenu. On the other side, it says Isa. There is a dragon and there's Moloch and there's you dying and your frequency and a piece of your soul looking like a lion with no arms and like a lightning strike or like an atomic bomb or some major catastrophe. Your soul was cut into pieces like Osiris's body was cut 14 times. We see Enlil. We see at uh, 8 o'clock and many different covert beings on the ethereal realm that has governed the project of our mind, our soul, and the invisible realm that we can't see. I always talk to you guys in two levels, one on the physical plane and the other on your double self, your rebirth self. But there are seven planes of reality that it's difficult to connect our minds to unless we go under hypnosis and remember 70,000 years ago, or I'm sorry, 70 million years ago, how our souls were taken into a ship, a galactic ship, and we were stolen and put onto this prison planet. So let's begin. The Princess Code is a collective planetary archetype filter that was inserted technologically by the NNA, NAA into human consciousness to purposely distort the female principle and female gender roles. As a result, this archetype can also be referred to as stemming from the dark female or the dark mother. This seems to be represented in your piece on the left-hand side. Baphomet forces that are manipulated by the satanic and luciferian spirits in their ritual alchemy to impose their timelines and future probabilities upon the current earth consciousness. Now you have Baphomet in your piece as well. When the NAA invaded the planet during the Atlantean cycle, the consciousness program installed into the planetary logos was sent to enslave the inhabitants of the planet based on Orion patriarchal domination through a strategy of shaping mind control through arconic deception behavior. This began the planet's dark age of misogyny. The Orion group was aware that to manifest creation, they require both male and female counterparts to merge with each other, just as the reversal electrons were manipulating the male principle. The protons were removed to descend the female principle energies into the underworld dimensions. To keep the false female energy trapped in the lower dimensions, this is called the Princess Code. So, the Princess Code hologram was installed to be used by the NAA. This is the negative alien 
forces as the counterpart of the false king of tyranny. The false king of tyranny archetype mates with the princess code archetype to maintain, maintain control through the power elite and the belief systems. So the power elite and these belief systems like institutions and religions are promoted throughout media, social society, and as an inherent part of grooming both boys and girls to adopt the abusive behavior. This dysfunction further promotes the sexual misery program and the Moloch-related soul abuse, and so that children will not grow into well-balanced adults capable of creating truly loving, healthy marriages and relationships. So this makes women fantasize about the knight in shining armor, that we have superior beliefs that she is a princess and the queen that makes demands of self-entitled treatment. Beliefs that she has to manipulate the male target as the knight fantasy in order to marry her and become the king. This is sexual manipulation. She begins to feel that she is deserving of wealth, jewels, or status or symbols and having a great, mighty, wonderful wedding. There is a general disregard for others, even those she is close with, in the relentless pursuit of her fantasies and personal goals. Cosmetic surgery, extreme manipulation methods to help make her appear more appealing to the male counterpart. There is a lot of narcissism. There's uh, refusals to listen to facts. We become uh, attracted to and addicted to a Jezebel or a seducer feminine um, demon or energy that attaches to our soul because of these programs. We often sign contracts uh, through emotions and beliefs and insurance and religions because of this program. In order to separate humans from the true sacred marriage... The NPG grids promote sexual misery and disconnection through all means, intimacy, um, and social, uh, social um, constructs, which puts us all in a prison mentally, and a false belief of self, a false belief of the world, a false belief of our origins, a false belief of our power, a false belief of institutions and religions. It's a sham. It's a terrible, terrible sham. We often, because of this sham, deep down, begin to become addicted to sick fixations and uh, dark protocols because we are weary. We are not using our power. We are not who we are meant to be. We are falsely led by the false light. For instance, like Hello Kitty products, they are part of this princess code and the anime cartoons they manipulate the false love, the false unity. The true unity is imagine everyone has the same face like you're in the movie Avatar and you say, I see you. And he says, I see you. And you love each other eternally not because of what you look like or what you do, but because you are divinely grouped and meant to be together in this divine love. Imagine that. So there's a program to program children, uh, pornography, um, anime, um, so many things uh, and programs in the social media in our religions even, um, program us to be dependent on the false other half. And your piece is speaking of the true other half of you. The true other half of you, your double self, is another female. And this other female is part of your blueprint of your soul. But what people don't talk about their double other self is your double can shapeshift into a man, a woman, an animal, anything. But for some reason, this double self of yours right now is a female. It seems to be a mirror of a soul or a piece of yourself you left behind. Maybe 78 million billion years ago, I don't know. But the two hands of you joining make a volcano. This volcano makes a rainbow. This rainbow makes... 
a cave of Brahma. This cave of Brahma takes you in like a meditative, meditative state back to a place that you have forgotten. A deep, deep, dark, deep, deep, beautiful place you have forgotten. So women are grown up to wear a lot of makeup and be this and be that um, in this avatar that we are in, in this program that we are in. And alas, if you could connect to who you truly are, you would hate it. (laughs) You would hate yourself because it's not you at all. We've been playing these games and these games have turned us into people that um, aren't us. So let us close that book and um, decide to go on a pilgrimage to find our true self. And our true self is somewhere far, far away. But because your mind is unlimited, you can go to the land of far, far away like Shrek and his wife who decided not to be beautiful, to be green, and to be against society and to go far, far away to find themselves. And that, so that's what you're doing as well. So we have to access our original power, the original light within us, and stand on that truth. What, what metal is that truth? Is it gold? What element is that truth? Is it air, wind, fire? Is it magma? Uh, is Scientology true? We have to recognize our inner pain and heal that pain to heal the inner violence. There is a Christos-based relationship that is ever-evolving within you. The Christos is the crystallization of spirit within you. And the spirit has the ability to time travel, open portals, and find yourself. Find your inner child. Find a lost self that is millions of years away. Maybe even on another planet. And you have the ability to grab these energies and get your power back, get your memory back. And escape the realm of the princess code. So the story of the male and the female being ripped apart is what I'm seeing in your boat. It's the story of Adam and Eve. Eve was cut from Adam. I don't know if Adam asked to be cut in half, but Osiris was cut 14 times, seven for her, seven for him. So listen to this video about what Scientology has to say about auditing our souls in order to remember and become powerful again whether it's true or not i don't know it is in your art though you know that they got blown up and they had a map of all the volcanoes of the world and hubbard actually made a list you can find it online it's in his (laughs) okay yeah in this interview hold on i'm going to go back to sharing the screen regularly phase in spotting the thing clusters finding out which one of the volcanoes it was blown up in and then auditing telepathically auditing that body phaeton through the incident of having been blown up in a volcano and then what to do if you finish auditing that bt on that incident and it hasn't blown Through auditing, one is able to look at his own existence and improve his ability to confront what he is and where he is. Vast differences exist between the technology of auditing, a religious practice, and other practices. It's what I call the recapitulation process. Recapitulating and auditing are are synonymous. The person being audited is completely aware of everything that happens. And in your piece, you are supposed to be auditing Issa. So I looked into it. Where is your volcano? It's called Isa. Now, there is a place in Nigeria. It's a dormant or extinct volcano that's been extinct for 66 million years. Notice that Zenu stole our souls 76 million years ago. There's also a place called Isa Lake near Yellowstone. There's also a place called Isa in Japan. But spirit brought me to Issa Lake in Yellowstone um, from talking to my husband. So you're going to want to telepathically connect with the volcano of Yellowstone and audit your soul back in order to get powerful again and awaken to the program that you are in and stave away from religious programs, dogmas, and begin to listen to the Holy Spirit 
your higher self, your double self, and know that that this world is a program. It's a mind control. There may be some connection to ESA being connected to the USA with the letters situated AI. The USA is artificial intelligence system. So this artificial intelligence is connected to um, you and your the blueprint of your soul is asking you to use your dragon, which is your that what is the fire breathing dragon? The fire breathing dragon that lives in the mountain, that lives in the volcano. This is your soul. It's the dragon. Why did Frodo go to Mordor and fight the dragon? And and why why in the ring of power? It is finding your soul in Mordor, the protected place. So it is Isa Lake because you are in a lake and there's a volcano and there's Zenu. So you have the ring of power, which is a crown. It has the all-seeing eye. Enlil is a, a alien who, with the letter E, who takes your memory that is an avatar that's in this avatar body that we're in and programs you into different realities, life after life. And you have a piece of your soul at five o'clock that is asleep under the power of the basso Basofet and Moloch energy at five o'clock. Your um, lioness is bound by a contract and has no arms. You need to give her arms by auditing your soul. Do I believe in Scientology? I don't know. But I know this. I know that the sorcerer's crossing is about recapitulating all of your past, including 75 million years ago with Zenu, in order to live forever. It's called the Great Crossing. And that's what your piece is saying. The rabbit's at the top. This is the year 2023. It is the white rabbit. The boat reflects the days of Noah returning. And there, the, there are many symbols of a new age, a new truth, birthing and emerging. Look at the male and female. The number 13 is an escape out of the realm of 12, 12 hours, 12 months, 12 zodiac signs. If you are not a Scientologist, if you knew nothing about this, I would be very surprised because this is absolutely spirit beckoning you to your double self, your other self stuck 75 million years ago in a volcano known as Issa Lake, in Yellowstone. Telepathically connect to it. I can feel it. Do you see her laying there at five o'clock with her eyes closed, with a frequency on her chest, bound by frequency, bound by mind control? Everything is created and destroyed through frequency. Do these demons and these disgusting um, beings who trapped us here on this prison planet even imagine or fathom that you could telepathically find somebody who could know where your soul is and give you the opportunity to find her and retrieve her. The Divine Mother, finding her other self, escaping the realm of 12, the prison planet, District 12. Yes, you can. I'm angry about it. I can feel my body turning red like lava just talking about it. I'm angry. We have been man manipulated into the princess code to have hybrids, to mate with the false other half, to have a desp despicable, careless, worthless, um, powerless, um, uh, silly life of chasing nothing, chasing the wind. And it's time to wake up. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. And if you don't believe this, I'm so sorry. I don't know if I believe it either. But I'll tell you this, I have a lot of faith in my process. I have a lot of faith in the Holy Spirit within me that moves through me. 
I don't like how Scientology charges you an exorbitant amount of money to do this when shamans already talk about the recapitulation process and going into the cave of Brahma to take back what was stolen. And they don't charge anything for it. It's just whether you are divinely meant to hear it. And guess what? You are divinely meant to hear it, but please take it seriously and don't take it lightly. I'm going to end now. But I would like to hear what happens and whether you can connect with your other self. In Issa Lake, Yellowstone, Volcano. It's time to wake up.